We are back with the DJI family today, which is always a great review to do because DJI is an incredible top-notch brand. Now, we arguably have one of the best phone stabilizers in the game right now in 2021. It's the DJI OM4. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Vibe Nick, where we're doing tech and gadget reviews. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name's Nick Desjarlay, and we just got over 200 subs. I can't thank you all enough, but now I gotta set a new goal to 500. So if you enjoy what you're seeing and you're not subscribed yet, feel free to smash that button to tag along for new videos every week. Okay, so that must be it. We just went over the whole gimbal. Oh. We haven't even started. Makes sense. Let's go. Okay, so the OM4 is still DJI's newest smartphone stabilizer, coming in at $150 and weighing 390 grams. And there's a lot of upgrades and cool things to know. So for your stabilizer, it's a three axis gimbal that has your pan motor, tilt motor, and roll motor for that full range of motion. And at the top, I am fired up about that new magnetic setup. Instead of having to clamp on your phone or screw it in like previous versions, you get a magnetic clamp to clamp on your phone or a magnetic ring holder to stick to the back of your phone. So which one should you use? Well, first off, do not take that magnetic ring holder and stick it to the back of a phone case only because it's not meant for this. And over a short amount of time, they say it can start to peel and potentially fall off. Only stick this bare to the back of your phone and they give you this plastic piece that lines everything up and lets you precisely fit it in the middle of your phone. And there are directions, make sure you follow them. You have to put down this first padding, then the sticky magnet on top of it, and then let it sit for so many hours. But once it's done and you're on the go, all you have to do is whip out your gimbal, toss the phone on, it magnetizes, then you turn on your gimbal and start recording. For me personally, I like my phone case. I will not take it off, so I just use the magnetic clamp. The only downfall there is, you know, every time you wanna use your gimbal, you have to put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, but it's so easy, it's really not that big of an issue. And you're probably skeptical on this whole new magnetic feature, one, because it's new, and two, because it's a magnet. Can you really trust it? Well, having this in person, yes, this magnet is super strong. I took both of them, and when they came close together, they shot towards each other and were glued. And even when you try to pull it apart, it can be a little difficult. Maybe a year from now, it'll get weaker. I doubt it. But if you're doing something high action or running around, you should be completely fine. The only downfall would be if you had your clamp on, maybe the phone would fall out, but that's it. So the magnet is super strong and the motor is much stronger than the past series. So that means it can hold up much more weight, up to 290 grams. If you have the iPhone 7 up to the iPhone 12, you're good. And I've heard some rumors saying the iPhone 12 is not compatible, but it is. Even if you have the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is giant, it still works. If you have a case on it, the clamps won't wrap around, but if you just have the phone itself, you should be good to go. Also, it is compatible with a list of other phones, way too many to name, so pause the video and take a look at what there is. It comes in one color, a light gray. It has an amazing comfortable handle with a panel of buttons, and in the top left, you have your LED light indicator to show where your battery level is at. Below that, you have your joystick, and you can actually change the speeds from slow, medium to fast, which is in the Memo app, and we'll get to that app in just a little bit. Next to that is your shutter and record button, and if you're in photo mode, you can actually hold this down and get burst shooting, which takes a bunch of photos at once, so if you're trying to get a picture of something that's high action, this will be the way to go. And then below that is your M button, which does a list of things. Press once to check your battery on the LED light indicator, then press and hold till it beeps once, to power on. Now that it's on, there's a lot more things you can do. Press once to switch between photo and video mode, press twice to go from landscape to portrait mode, then press and hold till it beeps so the motor shut down and it goes into standby mode. Now, this is one way to go into standby mode. The other one is if you're done with your footage or whatever you're doing, take the magnets and detach them and it automatically goes into it. 
I'm super happy about this. It's awesome because a handful of months ago, I did a review on the SmoothX gimbal, and when I would detach the phone off the gimbal, it wouldn't know how to you know, handle that shift in weight. It would freak out and looked like it was about to break. So this is definitely one of the highlights in this gimbal. Then press and hold till it beeps twice to turn it off, fold it up, and put it in the bag that they give you. It's not going to protect anything, but at least it keeps it all together. And you can buy the more expensive packages, which are like $50 more or even more than that, that can get you the nice cases. But if you just wanna buy this for $150, then buy a nice case separately for about 20 bucks, then link is below if you wanna go check that out. Okay, moving on, you have your zoom slider on the left, which pretty much just lets you zoom in and out on the camera to make things easier so you don't have to do it right on the phone. Then coming around the back, you have your trigger button, which again does a list of things. So let's jump into it. So press and hold to go into lock mode, which pretty much locks your gimbal and keeps everything in a forward direction. And as soon as you want to get out of lock mode, just release the trigger. Press once for active track 3.0 and active tracking is awesome, but the way the OM4 does it is so much better. You don't have to draw out that green square anymore and find something to connect to. Now you can just hit that trigger and it automatically picks up whatever object you're trying to get that's in front of you. So if you have a buddy, you know, walking, you can hit the trigger. It'll automatically catch onto him and start following him. Press twice to recenter your gimbal if it's not in place. Press three times to switch between front and back cameras. Then press once, then press and hold to enter sport mode. It's great for high action things. So for example, if you're running with somebody or following someone who's doing some crazy parkour, this sport mode is for you. Warning, if you are in sport mode, it will burn your battery a little bit faster, but you're probably not gonna use this as much as you think. And the only thing that sucks here is you do have to hold the trigger down the entire time, and as soon as you release it, sport mode exits. But if you go in the Mimo app, you can hit a switch and keep it on for as long as you want, and we will talk about the app in just a second. Also on this gimbal, you got your USB-C charging port to charge your gimbal, and it does give a cable with it. Then you got your USB-A port to charge things like your phone. So if you have a cable for your phone, you can plug it in and be good. So if you're on 1%, you got no outlet around, but you've got your gimbal, it's gonna take care of you. It comes with a tripod stand and attaches to the bottom, twist on to the 1 4th inch to 20 UNC port. I think I said that right. If I didn't, let me know below. But yeah, twist on. And the cool thing is, is if you have other tripods that are the same as this threaded size, you can attach it, which means you'll have a much longer reach to get super cool footage. All right, let's jump into the Mimo app that pretty much lets you do it all. Let's go. If you've never gotten this app, download it, make an account, connect your Bluetooth, and then answer whatever questions they may ask you, and this will be your camera setup. To mess with different follow modes that give you all these different kinds of motions, hit the three dots over here, then hit the camera with the line above, hit follow, and now there's four different modes. It's kind of a pain. I wish there was a button on the gimbal to access this easily, kind of like the DJI Pocket 2 has, but it's not the case. It's fine. I guess we'll live. In follow mode, you can pan and tilt, and it will follow your movements with a slight delay. This delay kind of gives a smoother look when panning left and right and tilting up and down. If it was quick to turn, the footage would be all over the place. You cannot roll it. When you try to do it, the camera stays in one place. So this is an awesome mode. I probably will use this most of the time coming up in the future, but let's get to the rest of them. Onto tilt mode, it keeps the camera on the horizon and only moves when you pan it. For the rest, the camera stays perfectly still. So get creative with this. Maybe if you want to move in on an object and keep everything still, you could use this one. Third one is FPV mode, meaning first person view. It moves in all range of motion, putting you in the action. It's very fun to use, letting you dip up and down, swaying and turning, kind of like you're flying. And the last one, which is kind of new, is spin shot mode. It's super cool. You can get awesome shots while spinning your camera sideways and upside down. And in my intro, you probably noticed I use that. There's something about it that's very intriguing. And when I see these types of shots, I notice my head kind of turning with it. All right, continuing on up top is your home button to exit out. You have your battery percentage of gimbal and phone's battery percentage to just see where you are. Coming down next to that is your auto and manual button to fix ISO, shutter, and EV. iPhones will get all of these options, but apparently on the Android, it's limited. I don't have an Android, so I don't know how 
limited it is, but you will not get as much as the iPhone. Same thing with their resolution in frames per second. iPhones will get 4K, 60 FPS, but Androids will only get maybe 4K and they don't get to choose their frames per second. Next to that is glamour effects where you can change the shape of your face and tone it to make it look better. I don't know, I tried it once and I changed the shape of my face and I kind of looked like an alien, so I immediately exited out and never used it again. But hey, if you're good at it, give it a try. Then below that is your three dots again, so you can turn on your flashlight, you can change your white balance, or you can turn your grid on and off. In the middle is your zoom where you can pinch your fingers and zoom in and out, but again, you have that slider on your gimbal, so I would just use that. Coming over to the other side, you have the usual photo, video, slow motion, hyperlapse, and time-lapse tabs that you see in all these other apps, but the hyperlapse and time-lapse is very fun to do, you know, Maybe I'll just walk around and do random things and the end result is pretty cool. But you can get awesome scenery shots of this or maybe if the sun's going down, you will never be disappointed. But the most intriguing tabs here are dynamic zoom, pano, and gesture control. So starting with dynamic zoom, what it is is you move in or out on a subject and damn, do you get a crazy cool video. It keeps the subject still like they're the same distance, but the background will be the only one moving. I've seen it before, but really never knew how it was done. And most of the time you're supposed to do it manually, but the great feature on this one is it's done automatically. So all you have to do is lock on to something, move forward or backwards, and it takes care of it for you. The next one is Pano, where you can do a three by three panoramic shot, which gets a nice wide angle shot. Then you can do a 240 degree panoramic shot, which is even bigger and then there is clone me clone me is the same as the three by three pano it just counts down before each of the three shots it takes letting you be in all the shots and this is the end result it's super trippy and really fun to mess around with and then the third one is gesture control so what you can do is hold up your palm or do a peace sign and it will start counting down to take a photo or video it's just another easy way to do things you do have the option to turn this on and off in the app just in case you know it starts triggering without you wanting it too. But those were the three I found the most interesting. And then the last one is your story mode, which gives templates to choose from, giving you cool automatic edits if you're not someone who's familiar with editing and would rather have it done quickly. All right, just a few more things before we wrap this up. So the battery lasts about 15 hours. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but if you're using sport mode all the time or maybe charging a device through it, you're not going to get that much. And the charge takes roughly two hours. Not bad. Now, should you buy the stabilizer? Well, yes and no. If you want fast access to using it and top of the line features, then yes, you won't be disappointed, even though it's a little pricey at $150. If you have an iPhone, yes. And if you have an Android, make sure you're okay with missing out on some of those features. But if you want something much smaller, more portable and can fit in your pocket, then go with the DJI Pocket 2. Link is right here if you wanna go check it out and learn more on it. But what it basically is, is a small pocket sized three axis gimbal that gives amazing photo and video footage. It's honestly my favorite review of a gimbal I think I've ever done, even though the OM4 is absolutely amazing. But both are fantastic. I love them both. Links are below. If you're still watching and enjoyed, smash that subscribe and like button for new videos coming all the time. I appreciate you for watching. You're the best, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.